Jesus certainly made strange choices in his prospective followers. In our time, when we look for vocations, we tend to search among committed and well-balanced Christians. But in today's gospel, we see Jesus picking someone who was regarded as an immoral money grabber and a religious outcast. Tax collectors were despised on two counts. First, they were seen as collaborators with the hated colonial ruler, the Romans, for whom they were working. And second, they were corrupt and extorted far more money from people than was their due. But Jesus knows his man, you might say. At the sound of the invitation, Levi drops everything, his whole business and the security it brings to him. It is very similar to the fishermen leaving their boats and their nets. And Levi then goes off after Jesus. Where? For what? He has no idea. Like Peter and Andrew, James and John before him, in a great act of trust and faith, he throws in his lot with Jesus, whatever it is going to mean and wherever it is going to bring him. In Luke's gospel particularly, the following of Jesus involves total commitment. Then, as his last fling, so to speak, Levi throws a party in his house for all his friends, who, of course, were social rejects like him. The religious-minded scribes and Pharisees were shocked at Jesus' behavior, and they complained to the disciples. Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus answers for them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Jesus has come not to call the virtuous, but the sinners to repentance. Jesus' words can be read, I think, in two ways. On the one hand, there is no need to preach to the converted, which is what we do a lot of in our Christian churches. What is needed is to reach out to those who are lost, those whose lives are going in the wrong direction, who are leading a self-destructive existence. And surely, that is what the church needs to be about today. There are still a lot of the Pharisees among us. We are still shocked if we see a priest or a good Catholic in bad company, and often jump to hasty and unjustified conclusions and we think or say, a priest, a deacon, a good Catholic should not be seen in such company. As a result, the church is, in many cases, very much confined to the churchgoers in society. Jesus' words can also be taken, I think, in a sarcastic sense. His critics regarded themselves as among the well and the virtuous. In fact, they totally lacked the love and compassion of God reflected in Jesus. Their virtue did not need Jesus because they were closed to him anyway. We remember the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector in the temple. It was the one who acknowledged himself as a sinner and wanted God's mercy who won God's favor. We, too, I think, need to be careful of sitting in judgment of others, taking the high moral ground and claiming to be shocked at certain people's behavior. Without exception, we are all in need of healing. Would you pray with me? O oh God of strange choices, may we, as we begin this Lenten journey, be made more like Levi, dropping everything that keeps us from you, dropping our unjustified conclusions, dropping our hasty judgments of others and of ourselves. And may we have the strength to acknowledge that we are sinners in so much need of your mercy and your favor. And may we commit this Lent to responding totally to your call. Amen.